Well, good afternoon. I guess we're going to get started. Um, my name is Bob Blanchek. I'm the president and CTO of Razron Mobile. We're in Baltimore, Maryland area. And uh, we've been doing a lot of work around payments and health information exchange in healthcare. Um, and so my talk today is going to talk, deal with how do you use the PayPal APIs to facilitate payment at the point of care and how you can combine that with health information exchange for patients um, and make that a seamless experience. So just a little bit about Razron Mobile. We, we've created a, a technology we call the RAS code, which is an intelligent two-dimensional barcode, as shown here on, on the screen. And in this version of it, it's, it's, we use a, a Microsoft tag, which is similar to uh, QR codes and some of the other ones that you see um, just about everywhere, including here at the conference. And they're becoming ubiquitous. Um, they're available. You see them in magazines and stores. Um, and to date, they've been pretty much used in advertising and content applications where you take a picture of it and then some contact content is loaded onto your uh, mobile phone so you can look at it and get more information about something you're interested in. What we've done, we've embedded a lot of intelligence into these tags and an entire web services architecture behind it to enable a lot of interesting applications in mobile health, mobile payments, and mobile authentication. So my agenda today is to talk a little bit about the drivers of what I'm calling consumer-centered or connected health and the payment opportunity that derives from that. Um, give a little parallel to how the healthcare industry can learn a lot from financial services and the payment card industry. And then I'll actually show you how this works. I'll give you a demonstration of how the, the tags work and how data and, and money can move. Um, and, and then I'll come back and go into some of the details behind how it works behind the scenes. Um, and then talk about how we're taking it, this concept from healthcare into general commerce with a product we're calling PayPix that's being launched uh, this quarter. Okay. So consumer-centered health, we've all heard a lot about healthcare um, in the last year. Um, we have a lot of mandates uh, from the government, things called the meaningful use and, and high tech are incentives for doctors to adopt electronic medical records. There's incentives and then there, there's carrots and there's sticks. So they're being incented where they can actually earn up to $40,000 if they adopt an electronic medical record and meaningfully use it. Um, and if they don't choose to use one, then several years down the road there will be penalties for not using them. So uh, there's a, a move towards um, electronic medical records in a big way. Um, there's things like the 30-day readmittance penalties. So if you go to the hospital and get treatment, and you're discharged, if within the next 30 days you go back into the hospital um, for the same condition, the cost is on the hospital's dime, not yours. So the hospitals are really incented to engage you in your own care and make sure you don't get readmitted. readmitted. And then obviously all the health care reforms. There's also changing expectations from the consumer's perspective. Um, consumers look to online solutions as an integral part of their total health care. Um, wellness and fitness are huge, obviously. And then, of course, the economics of this, the accelerating health care costs that we've heard over and over again. Um, chronic disease management is probably the biggest source of cost in our health care system. And a, an untold secret and, and very dangerous situation is the growing shortage of doctors, and in particular, their primary care situation, which is deteriorating very rapidly. So consumer-centered health is becoming... Um, a mandate is not an option anymore. So what results from that is a in, in very large payment opportunity. Um, estimates that there will be $400 billion of direct out-of-pocket payments by consumers to practitioners in 2015. So this is outside of insurance, um, Medicare, Medicaid, private insurance, whatever. Um, which is in the trillions of dollars, but there's, there's $400 billion that goes directly from the patient or consumer, consumer's wallet to the physician or practitioner. And this is driven by the rise in um, consumer-directed health vehicles such as HSAs. Um, um, employers are demanding that employees share a larger portion of the costs. Chronic disease management, as I mentioned, and then 
the health, wellness, fitness, discretionary expenses all contribute to this as well. So as we started looking at this problem of, of how do you get information in the hands of consumers and how do you deal with this payment, um, we, we looked at it from the e-commerce perspective. Uh, my company is not a healthcare IT company. We actually come from e-commerce and finance. And when you look at the problem from the payment card in the industry perspective, there's a lot to learn. So um, we've all seen many of the in, uh, statistics here over the last couple of days. This is Visa. Visa is going to process 50 billion credit card transactions this year alone. Every one of those will find us. And often to our dismay, they find us very quickly. So I can, I can swipe a credit card here in San Francisco, go home to Maryland tomorrow and see that transaction online, download it, do whatever I want um, with it. And of course, PayPal statistics as well, over $72 billion in total payment um, volume. So um, there, there's a lot to learn. This system just works. And then when you look at it and kind of delve into what's key about it that you can take and apply to healthcare, the key characteristics to me are, one is there's this focus on discrete transactions, right? So every time we swipe our credit card, enter a credit card number or a PayPal ID or what have you, that discrete transaction is what flows through the, seat, through the system. Um, the consumer is the integrator of their financial record, um, which is key. And there's no tethering of merchants together into exchanges that try to share your financial record in order to make a decision about you. It's all based on individual transactions that the consumers initiate. Uh, they initiate every, every transaction. So if you take those, those, those characteristics, you can start to devise a system that might work in healthcare. In healthcare, um, the focus is on medical records. Organizations try to sync up your entire medical history across providers and payers and so forth. And it's a very difficult and challenging job. And if you start looking at these every encounter in the healthcare system as a transaction, it actually makes the system um, a lot easier. Um, and there's only a billion ambulatory health encounters um, in the United States each year, where there's 50 billion payment card transactions in Visa alone in the year. So it's a, it's a smaller problem as well. So the solution we came up with is to use these RAS code, 2D barcodes, mobile technology, and, and, and the PayPal uh, APIs. And our goal was to make getting access to personal health information and to pay for healthcare expenses at the point of care um, as easy as swiping a credit card. So in our case, it's taking a picture of a barcode image and then, and then our RAS code gateway combined with the pay, PayPal uh, servers facilitates uh, money and information moving to various destinations. So the, the taking the picture replaces that swiping the card. Now this could actually work by using another card, but I think the consumer is much more inclined to use their mobile phone today than they are to put yet another card in their wallet to facilitate this type of transaction. So here's a brief picture of how it works. Um, in the upper left-hand corner there, you see the, that would be an electronic medical record system of some sort. And as part of the health encounter, the doctor or a nurse or a practitioner is entering data into that health um, electronic medical record system, which is integrated to our RAS code gateway. So it's n not unlike taking a website that's going to accept credit cards and connecting it to a payment gateway. Same concept. What comes out of that gateway are the RAS codes, which contains personal health information and, and a payment request. Okay? And that barcode is given to the patient in some way, shape, or form. They can log into a physician's patient portal and see it online. It can be emailed to them. It can be printed out at the bottom of a discharge summary and handed to them, displayed on a kiosk. Anyway, the key is just to get that barcode into the hand of the consumer. And then once they've taken a picture of it, the RAS code gateway gets involved again, processes that transaction through the PayPal servers and through a bunch of other APIs to any health management service that's supported by the gateway. So things like Microsoft Health Vault, Google Health, Dossier, Kias, um, Training Peaks. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of what we call health management services out there that patients and consumers are interested in taking, in, um, taking advantage of. 
So I'm going to switch gears here a little bit now and, and do a, a demonstration of, of how this works. So let me bring up um, a browser. Actually, let me go back here real quick. I want to set this up for you a little bit. Um, here's the scenario I'm going I'm to go through, the, kind of the use case. We have a 45-year-old uh, diabetic female, and she frequently visits her primary care physician because she has a chronic disease, so at least once every three months she's going in for a, for a visit, uh, has occasional visits to specialists um, for some of the side effects of her diabetes. Um, she's actively engaged in controlling her disease, so she wants her data, she wants her health information so she can use to track her, her blood glucose levels, her weight, her blood pressure, and all the key indicators um, that tell you whether you're on the right track when you have this disease. And the provider wants to track patient with progress outside of office visits. So on a do typical doctor's visit, she may go in and the doctor may measure her weight, take her blood pressure, uh, do a blood glucose test, um, for her, and at the end of that encounter, the patient wants a copy of that data to use in the way she's going to use it, and the provider wants to collect that copayment or other fees associated with that encounter. Okay. So now I'll bring up the browser and fire up a little demo here. So what will pop up here in a second is a electronic medical record called Patient Fusion. Patient Fusion is a very popular electronic medical record. I should say Practice Fusion. Uh, patient Fusion is the, the patient portal aspect of it, but Practice Fusion is used by tens of thousands of physicians in the country as an electronic medical record, and, um, um, and it has a patient portal component to it as well. So what's, what's come up here, that's not good that it didn't show the barcode. Try that one more time. So in this case, the, the patient has visited a doctor and has left the office or, or is at the office and logs into the, uh, the uh, patient portal and wants to take advantage of that barcode that should be displayed right there. And unfortunately, the, uh, the Microsoft tag server is not returning the barcode right at the moment. Um, let me try this one more time. Okay, um, so what should happen here is there should be a barcode that, like I showed you before, on the bottom, showing on that on that page, um, but it's not showing right at the moment. And usually, within a few seconds or so, it'll reset itself and actually start generating them again. But what I'll do is I'll kind of walk through how this works with some pictures. Um, so let me go back to my diagram or my presentation, I should say. So here's what, what it would look like. So the um, patient takes a picture of that barcode, and then, in this case, it's a BlackBerry. Um, the first thing that pops up is it says the RAS code contains a following payment request. Okay, so it actually has some information in there, and it's asking for a co-payment of $25. Um, there's a past due charge of $50, and there's a uh, personal health information transfer fee of $1.50. So it's something like $76.50 that the, the physician is asking from the patient. Okay, and that's, that's shown over here. Um, so by clicking on a button that's shown below that screen, it says um, payment authorized, and that actually will fire up um, 
PayPal, and you put in your PayPal credentials and authorize the payment, and an actual transaction occurs between your PayPal account and a doctor. Um, when that is, is done, you can see over here is the other app, and there's the authorized payment button. Okay. Um, what will happen then is it comes back and tells you that the actual uh, payment is complete, but it also tells you that there's personal health information attached to that barcode as well, and it's asking you where would you like it to go. So you see a list of, of health management services that this user um, is using. So they have Google Health and Microsoft Health Vault and et cetera, et cetera. So they select where that information would go um, just by clicking on that and then say uh, transfer information. Okay, and then comes back and tells you that the transfer is complete. Okay, so um, the minute that done, now that information would be in their health vault, personal health record. They may have put it up at Kiaz, which is a um, care management system. So you get customized care plans for diseases or if you're trying to lose weight or what have you to help you manage your condition. Um, and, and money is actually um, transferred all by taking a picture of that barcode. And since I'm really brave, I'll give it one more shot, see if it actually will work now. There we go. <laughs> so you want to actually see how it works. Um, so here, here's my BlackBerry screen. And all I need to do to bring this up is I bring up this uh, tag reader software, which is freely available out on the web, and it supports all the major platforms. Um, so it has um, the, the iPhone, the Android, Blackberry is Microsoft Windows phone, or the Windows phone, as well as any J2ME phone or Symbian phone um, will be supported by, by this tag reader. So um, what I need to do is I'm going to pick this up briefly here, and I'm just going to point my camera at this barcode that's displayed on my screen. and I'm going to take a picture of it. And the lighting's not so good here, so I'll take... Okay, so it says the um, tag was successfully scanned. It's opening that tag. And processing it. Now, I should point out that this tag can only be read by that physical device, okay? So that, that device is my device, and the system knows it's my device, so no other person could come along and find that tag and try to take a picture of it and get access to the information. It would tell them that it's an invalid mobile device or invalid tag, um, but it, it, it's tied to your, to your physical device. So there you see the, um, the payment request there of $76.50. So I can either opt to pay it or not. I'll uh, click the processing payment button. And there it brings up the PayPal. Let me pick this up so I can type it quickly. So I've logged in um, to my PayPal account. Um, ask me to authorize it. So I'll say pay now. Okay, the payment transaction has been completed. You'll get a receipt. Um, and now it's asking me where I'd like that information to go. So I'll uh, pick this up here again. I'm going to select Health Vault, and I'll also put it in Kiaz. And I'll say Transfer Information. Okay, so both of those transactions have been completed. So now if I go over to my Health Vault uh, record, and I'll refresh this. You see there's some, some data there um, already. So there, uh, oops, sorry about that. I guess I've got to go back to the screen here. 
So um, there's the weight measured, blood glucose measurement, and the blood pressure measurement um, transferred to, to my health fault record. I can also go over to my Kiaz account and um, you to log back in here. And there's that same data that's in my Kiaz account, okay? And in the same way, I should be able to go over to my PayPal account or the provider's uh, PayPal account and actually see that that money has has flown. So let me put my password in here. Okay, so um, they're showing a seventy-two dollars and eighty-three cent fee has been added to the doctor's PayPal account. Okay, so that gives you a sense of of how how it works in, in a in a daily operation just by taking a picture of that. Data can move in a bunch of ways, and money can flow in a bunch of ways as well. Um, so let me jump back here now. and go into a little bit behind, behind the scenes of how this works, okay? So um, here's an overview of the process. Again, the, the, the consumer application, so in this case it was an electronic medical record, um, sends what we call a stage request, which is just an HTTP post connect, connection or uh, request that contains personal health information and the payment request over to the RAS code gateway, okay? The gateway returns essentially a pointer to a JPEG image, which is that barcode that has a lot of intelligence and security embedded into it. The user takes a picture of that, um, and the RAS code gateway then performs a set mobile checkout, as we're using the mobile checkout API at this point. Um, user provides their PayPal credentials and approves the payment. The RAS code gateway then performs a do mobile checkout payment, what actually makes the, the money flow. Um, and then we do a, uh, so that sends the money um, to the health job or, or to our system, and then behind the scenes, we do an adaptive payment pay operation to actually pay the provider. You know? And I'll talk a little bit about why we do it that way based on some of the um, APIs um, that, that PayPal provides. And then at the end, the, the RASCO gateway then processes the personal health information and sends it off to where it needs to go as well. So this gives you a quick look at what a, a stage request looks like. It's all based on OAuth. Um, for the developers in the room. So this is a digitally signed request um, that identifies, in this case, the electronic medical record system or vendor, if you will. So in this case, it was Practice Fusion. It identifies the instance of that um, system. So Practice Fusion is used by tens of thousands of physicians, so it identifies which physician is requesting this. And then here at the end, it also tells me which user is using it, so that's tied to the mobile device as well. And inside the post body is just a couple things. One we call a health encounter record, which is just a, um, a, can be either what's called a continuity of care record, which is a standard in healthcare, or it can be a string, what we call an OM, open mobile health exchange string, which is a simple way, Twitter-like commands for transferring health information. And then a payment is just a JSON string containing information about the, the, the payment that the uh, provider is requesting, okay? Um, and then again, the RAS code gateway creates the barcode, consumer application, um, and then displays it to the user, emails it to the user, prints it out, gets it into the user's hands in some way. The user snaps a picture of it um, to make the whole transaction go, and then um, the gateway does the set mobile checkout which is, uh, this is the, an example of an API call there, which brings up the credentialing screens from PayPal um, for the user to authorize that payment. Um, then we do the do mobile checkout, which is an example here based on the token we got back from the set mobile checkout. And then behind the scenes, we do an adaptive payment to send off to the provider, okay? And then finally, we process the personal health information. Okay. 
So um, this, this system here is a perfect use case for adaptive payments, chain payments, um, but unfortunately it's not completely supported on mobile phones, adaptive payments isn't, and the it, chain payments are not supported yet on the mobile express checkout. So my plea to PayPal is please put chain payments into the, <laughs> the mobile express checkout. It'll be a very helpful to us in, in what we're doing. So we had two, two options. We could either do pre-approvals, let the user pre-approve their payments, which avoids having to put in credentials at all, or we could do this implement mobile checkout so they can authorize each payment and do the AP transfer. We tr took this approach for now um, just because it gives people more confidence um, when they're actually approving it one at a time. Uh, I think that'll change over time as the uh, brand is built and as the APIs evolve as well. Um, and then beyond healthcare, we're taking this to a product we call PayPix, um, mobile payments. And this provides merchants an ability to display a RAS code online or offline to collect payments for customers for any goods or services. Okay, so wherever you see one of these PayPix RAS, uh, RAS codes, you can take a picture of it and actually process uh, a payment. Um, it could be used by a merchant or it could be used by a, a what we call a processor or an intermediary that's processing payments on the behalf of of a user, so that might be an ad agency, for example, or some kind of service provider to a merchant. A very simple integration, um, as shown here. Um, the system submits what's called a contract that lays out who gets what money and where does it go and the fees and so forth. And then every time they want to they want to create a payment, they use a create payment API that returns the barcode, is displayed to the user, and then when the user takes a picture of it. It's, it processes the transaction, okay? So, summarize it up, the PayPal APIs um, we used were the permission services where we go out and get refund permission in case we have to process refunds. We use PayPal mobile checkout to process the payments on the mobile device and we use adaptive payments in the background to move money to, to providers. Um, and again, I think the mobile express checkout API will, will change some of this. So again, RAS code is a, is a two intelligent two-dimensional barcode that turns that simple act of taking pictures into a powerful tool for mobile health and mobile payments and, and mobile authentication because we, we actually use these codes and things like online banking to authenticate a transaction just by taking a picture. So it turns your smartphone into an authentication device because we can tie it to the device. Doctors can use it in electronic prescriptions um, to authenticate controlled substances, which is a requirement of the DA. So it works in, in authentications as well. Um, the, 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 oops, the, uh, the PayPal APIs are a big help in making this happen. And um, with the new, new service, it makes paying for just about anything as simple as uh, taking a picture with, with your smartphone. And at this point, I'll stop and uh, open it up for questions. I just had two questions. One is the, the RAS code, does it actually contain the information or does it just contain a link to uh, online resources that, that contains the information? Right. Yeah, it uh, contains no real information. Okay, and then the other question was, I, I see the use case for the offline to the online world, but if you're already on a website, I, where is the added value in taking a picture and then going through another workflow where you could just pay on the website? Um, you don't have to provide your uh, credit card number at all. So you're not, you don't have to provide PayPal credentials, you don't have to provide a credit card number, and you don't have to provide your mobile phone number at all. You're completely anonymous. It's, it's tied to the physical hardware. Right, you can reauthorize a new. Question was if they uh, lose their phone or it breaks or they replace their phone. There's a, there's a process to what we call proofing, um, which says take a picture of a barcode to actually set up that connection. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, the, the device device software does that.
The HIPAA is the, the primary regulation um, that governs that. Um, in, in our system, what we, we work with partners to say is don't provide any personal identifying information into healthcare information that flows. So there doesn't need to be your name, your address, your email address, nothing. It's, so it may be a prescription. It may say 10 milligram Percocet. That's all we need. I don't need to know it's for Joe Smith or anything. So it, it can be completely sanitized as it's moving through our system. Okay, that's the best way of protecting the data. Then when it ends up wherever it's going to end up, uh, we delete it. Okay, so we don't store the data, we don't maintain the data uh, for the people. And to use our service, the only information we require is a email address, which is your username and a password. We don't know your name, we don't know your phone number, we don't know your address, we don't know anything about you. All right. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask, could you talk a little bit more about how you authenticate using that barcode? Uh, why is it? <clears throat> why is the hard the hardware tied to the authentication? I didn't quite understand that. Okay, so the when you take a picture of that barcode, um, well, what we wanted to do was we wanted to say that only a specific device could take a picture of that barcode. Okay, so that was the goal because if you if you dropped it on the floor or somebody was looking over your shoulder, they could technically take a picture of that. Now, getting back to your question, there's, there's no personally identifying information with it, so if they, they, saw, they couldn't actually do anything with it other than move it to a health vault or so forth. But it's another layer of protection. So the device basically reports an ID to us, and, and we know the ID, and we do some comparisons, and it's part of a digital signature and so forth. But it's all meant to just make sure that we know which device took that picture. Does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> right, the device could be lost and then you, you basically re, uh, reset the device. There's a capability in the service that says, I want a new device. So you would actually replace that, okay? So there's, there's a way of, of connecting, when you're signing up for the service, connecting to um, to the to the device, the specific device. I mean, if their credentials are compromised or, or some such thing. Well, it's actually done out of band. Um, um, there, there, there's different ways of doing that. You can um, email them the actual barcode that proves it. In the banking world, we actually do. It, they actually do it in um, in person. So the, the most, the most um, secure way is it's done in person that first time when they take a picture. Then the next level down is you email it to them or mail it to them um, as, as part of a registration or sign-up process. So it's an out-of-band um, request. And then the most convenient but least secure is actually as part of the sign-up online and you take a picture and, and do it. it just, there's different ways of doing it, managing that depending on how secure you want to be. Right, right. I mean, I, I'm just this weird tech person, so I might, it might be like, <laughs> right. I, I'm trying to understand the consumer reaction, because that's a huge part of you staying in business, right? And people actually doing it. So do you think there's easier ways for you to uh, get past these barriers? Because I'm not, I'm not making people feel bad or anything. It's just like, I, I just can't see how it's more secure to write things on pieces of paper. Right, it's, it's, not, it's a perception uh, issue. It's yeah. just, you know, 10, 10 years, 15 years ago, there's probably people in this room that said, I'll never put my credit card online in a website. 
Well, I, <laughs> right? I, I mean, so, I, could, I could sense that emotion, but do you think if you make it say, oh, it's just like the credit card's so shady, I mean, just right. give me your credit card. I do it all the time, right? right. And it's like, um, can, can you like make an analogy or do a white paper? Are there strategies that you have to overcome consumer like fear? Because that's, it's a, it's a really valid business issue, right? So. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, you know, and it's changing rapidly. I think as people, you know, healthcare information has never flown to the consumer in any form easily um, until very recently. So there's kind of a culture around healthcare that that information is only with the doctor, and and but that's rapidly changing. And I think that will probably be the biggest catalyst that breaks it down, along with education that there's no personal identifying information, etc., um, going along with it. So yeah. Uh, I've been involved in two failed um, PHI um, efforts, you know, um, personal MD and Red Medic, and they failed because we couldn't get traction from the consumers. And now that Google and Microsoft are in the game, there's, play, there's space for these sorts of things. And I think one of the, the big points here is that there's the, in this little message that you're sending around, there's a little, there's this standard uh, format for, um, for, health for a snippet of health information. Um, I know about HL7, but I don't know about these two formats that you were talking about. I, don't, I didn't right. hear exactly what they were. Okay. I'd like to know more about them. So the, the, the one that's the primary one we use is called a continuity of care record, CCR. Uh, and that's an XML standard, okay, that was created outside of HL7. Now, interestingly, there's a HL7 version of it called the Continuity of Care document. Okay, so there, there was a group that came up with the CCR and they started fighting with the HL7 guys and they finally got together and said, why don't we cooperate? So basically, CCD is just an HL7 wrapper around a CCR. Okay, and it's one of the, um, pr one of the standards that's uh, mandated by the government in their, the health care reform bill as, as a suitable way of doing it. The other one is called Open Mobile Health Exchange. Um, and this is a um, skunk works off, off to the side open source uh, project, a bunch of people that are just tired of all these crazy HL7 standards and so forth and say there's got to be an easier way. Um, and for things, this platform also supports medical devices and so forth, so you can actually connect weight scales to it and step on a weight scale and remove data. Um, and when you're starting to send that kind of data, having a heavyweight XML document just doesn't make sense. Um, so that's kind of more of a little radical group off here <laughs> um, doing things, but, but that gains some traction. A device that collects audio. Right. I just wanted to understand the, the limitation of your, your two device uh, setup. I mean, it, it, if I understand well, if you use a browser on your mobile device, then you cannot use this, right? No, that, this is completely mobile based, or browser based. No, no, but you cannot take a picture easily of the screen that you see on your mobile device. I mean, how? Well, you not need with two, your own. You need two devices. I mean, one. Right, right. Not, yeah, if you're. If, Sending the, sending the barcode to your own device and trying to take a picture of it. Well, it, I, mean, it, uh, I mean, people will use their mobile device to, to see their record and to see your little RAS uh, code. Right. And then they are kind of stuck because then they cannot take the picture. Yeah, I'll talk to you offline. I'm trying to understand the use case there on, on, on the what The use case is they don't use a laptop or, or a desktop. They use their mobile device to browse and to see the screen. Right. After that, they see the RAS code on the screen on their mobile device. In your workflow, you have to take a picture of the screen. You have to take a picture with your mobile device that you use to browse the website. Right. So it doesn't work. Not in, yeah, not in that okay. use case, correct. But isn't, isn't the RAS code generated by the provider? Yes. So, so they would have to get it to you in another way. Yeah. A piece of paper on a kiosk, something. Yeah, can't. Then there's other ways of doing it without the RAS code as well. Um, but yeah, you can't take a picture of the, the, of the picture on your screen. So a quick question about the workflow, because I, I kind of understand from the point at which I have taken a picture. I'm trying to understand the workflow before that. How do you anticipate this happening? I go to the doctor, I get my whatever they do, uh, and then I come back home and log into my computer, and then 
see this barcode and then pay with my mobile device? I'm trying to understand that workflow. It, it, it would depend on the provider. So in some situations, the provider would do it right at the point of care. You check out at the, the, the desk after your appointment, and they give you some kind of piece of paper, a receipt, anything, and at the bottom of it is, is a barcode. Okay, so you can snap it right there and then take it home and do it later. Other cases, they may have done some blood tests or so forth, and it takes a week to get those back. You may get another barcode emailed to you that has that data. You open up your email, take a picture of it. So to, uh, if I get the email, why, why my mobile device? Why not have something on my computer that also does that, that kind of scans that barcode and does the same uh, On the computer? Uh, yeah. yeah, eventually that, that'll be there, eventually. Um, the barcodes are designed for, for the cell phone cameras right now, but I, I expect a, a, a webcam kind of solution as well. Uh, my question is how uh, widespread is RAS code usage right now? It's, I mean, it's, it's, in, it's infancy. It's infancy. It, yeah. Why didn't you take another uh, barcode tag? Um, we, we chose the, the Microsoft tag because it's very fast in scanning them. Um, the read rate is very high. Um, there's um, localization or location capabilities associated with it, and there's some um, characteristics of the tag reader that are important as, as well. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm this is kind of, I guess, along some of these other questions about usability, but I mean, we have a baby boomer population that's going to be a quarter of the United States within by 2020 and I'm just wondering I, I know a lot of them don't even have computers or a smartphone or or probably don't intend to get one or it could be a very long time to adapt it to even understand this concept to see the the benefit so I mean I think this is great for like people my age or whatnot but it just seems like we're the growth market for healthcare it's going to be more and more older people so I guess I'm just trying to see how you're going to account for that well I think um, yeah, the, the, the peop our parents and grandparents today aren't going to use this themselves, but their kids or grandkids that are caregivers uh, very might, might, okay? So I don't think, yeah, the target is not my mom or dad or, or, or they're not going to use this. Now, for people that don't have a smart, I didn't show it here, but there's actually a um, character string that can come with it as well, an eight-character string that you can actually go to a browser and type it in. Um, so you don't have to use a camera. So there, there's other ways of doing it uh, to, to get around that. But um, the, the old people tomorrow are all of us. So the trends are mobile. Um, so yeah, we're definitely not targeting the elderly. It can be more the caregivers um, that are likely to use it. I think one more question and we'll be done. You know, um, there's a lot, one thing I just, what do you think about like Sonamba? I thought that was so interesting um, and there's a lot more um, devices being open now with touch screen. Um, do you think, I mean, do you think it's totally possible to make things that um, just some, some of the older people who are like 90 years old, you know, in 20 years going to use like, um, Sonamba is really cool because it, it's like a lot of the Google APIs right. are, are things are, they're being used for these kind of weird, more simplified platforms right. that kind of, um, like, the, like there's Jitterbug, right? And they're right, doing a lot exactly. of telehealth. So I, like, what, do you think that's like the direction? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think that that from the elderly population, I don't think it's a technology issue. I think it's a cultural issue. I, I always joke, if, if my parents' doctor told them to jump off a bridge, they'd go jump off a bridge and they wouldn't ask a single question, right? That's just the mindset. Um, our generation, when we go to the doctor, we, we bring in our own research and say, here's what I found, what do you think, and it's more of an engaging experience. So I think there's more of a cultural issue with the elderly than, than a technology issue at this stage. Uh, one more question. Uh, <clears throat> why did you go into a 2D barcode um, that Microsoft Tag has a, um, like a colored uh, barcode that first came out, why, and that holds more information? Why go into a 2D that, holds less, more, less information? Well, Microsoft tag can be just rendered black and white or color. Same tag, okay? Um, we just chose black and white because it's less ink. We, we, could, we could render them in color, it, it doesn't matter. 
Um, right now, we're just rendering them in black and white. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your, your time and attention.